I dig through my luggage and pull out a coat and a scarf. At least this time I'm smart enough to remember that. Eh. Or maybe I'm just taking my time because I don't like being dragged out of bed. As I trudge through the flower shop, I glance at the clock on the wall. It's 11am. Oops. <clears throat> okay, maybe she does have a reason to wake me up. She didn't have to be so mean about it, though. Yeah. Could have just done it last night, but no, same excuse for leaving early. Whatever. I kick up the snow as I wander across the icy street to the library. It's only a few blocks away. She really can't just deliver this herself. <sighs> Again, you're being employed. You don't have a choice. You have to do it. <laughs> Hey, look. All right, we are either going to meet Marianne here or we're going to meet a new boy. I'm calling it now. The library's small and but cozy, a nice place for a nap. Hello, may I help you? Oh my god, you have another outfit. That's... I've just noticed everyone in this place pretty much changes their clothes once every six months. That's it. Yes, hello, how may I help you? Uh, she's got to be the librarian. Look at those glasses. Definitely librarian. Um, hey, I've got this lunch from Susanna. Oh, of course, thank you very much. My name is Marianne, I'm the librarian here. Ta da! Haha, <laughs> Marianne the librarian. Yes, yeah, it's just a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Oh, if I had that name and people kept saying that, I'd just punch them eventually. Her response is quick and practiced, I guess she's heard that joke before. You must be the new girl helping Susanna with her shop this year. Eh, I think helping is putting it loosely. Yep, I'm Natalie, although I haven't actually done anything yet except bring you lunch. Well, it's appreciated. Oh my god, what are you wearing? The trend. Look, come here, mate. Come here. Come here. I need to tell you something. Uh, this isn't the 90s. Or the 80s, for that, mood, for that matter. <laughs> what is that you're wearing? Christ. It looks like a six year old designed it. A young man with dirty blonde hair appears behind me without warning. Eep! Whoa, were you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I just wasn't expecting you. Sorry about that. He leans down to get a better look at my face. Oh, you're the new girl, Natalie, right? Susie mentioned you were coming in. Susie? Does he mean Susanna? No, why would he? Looks oddly. I'm Trent, by the way. Susie's my little sister. Trent, right. Clara mentioned that Susanna had a brother. She neglected to conclude the part where he's incredibly cute, though. And a complete freak. Um... I try to respond, but I can't really think of anything useful to say. Marianne. Trent looks away from me. Yes? Your editor's on the phone right now. He wants to talk about the contest. Oh, of course. Marianne hurries off to the back of the library. Oh, so she did become an author. Whoop, whoop. Right, anyway. Editor. Trent grins proudly. Yep, Marianne's a pro writer. Poet, actually. She's the guest judge for a poetry competition in a literature magazine right now. Kind of a big deal. I see. Not just a professional writer, but someone good enough to be a judge. She's really impressive. I heard her poetry the last time. It was dreadful. That's really cool. Oh, do you like poetry? Uh, poetry? I don't know the first thing about it. Well, except I think it's kind of boring. Yeah, some poetry can be fun. It's just when you sat down in front of a teacher for the 300th time, he's like, right, analyze this poem. And you're sitting there going, oh my God, not again. And it's always something about famine and war. It's never something happy or fun. A little story time here. We once got a poem and it was about... It, 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 it's, it's Spain, all right? So he sat down, good story time, in case I didn't say that. He sat down and and said, right, this thing's about a retard and an employer. And it's just like, oh, get off Spain, not subtle about things. You call foreigners foreigners and everything what they are, a spade a spade, etc. And he sat down, we all had this poem read out to us and I had to read it out and... It was about this, as said, retard and employer, and he needed to take honey and flour down to a certain place. And on the tray that he had, there was only room for one thing. So he put the honey on, didn't see there was another place, but then saw underneath the tray there was flour, space for flour there. So he turned the tray over and put the flour there. And then when he went down to the warehouse, he went, look, I've got the flour. And the guy went, well, where's the honey? And he flipped the tray around and went, look, here it is. And then obviously the flower went all over the floor as well. And we got asked, what was the moral of the story? Don't imply a retard? What could possibly be the fucking moral there? There you are, Poetry 101. There's a reason why I don't like it. Uh, say you love poetry, say you don't get it. Um, I'm waiting out for the other guy, so we'll say this now. I'm afraid I don't really get it most of the time. 
Oh god, don't tell me he's going to turn around and go, oh, don't worry, I can really, uh, I can explain it to you. You know, one of those killer man lines. Oh, I really hope he doesn't. Poetry is too confusing for me. I'm better with people just saying things straight out. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, well, that went badly. Oh, well. Oh, I hear you there. Honestly, I can't understand a word of it either. Really? Then why are you here? I work here. If you work here? Well, sort of. Marianne's really busy with her writing, so I help out of the library from time to time. For who? This library is hardly national. You could work with Susanna, and she wouldn't be having this problem. I mean, it's not exactly like... And hang on a minute! The librarian's a little bit too busy to be doing her work, so I've just come here and they've employed me to do her job. What? You fucking mental! All of you... Oh, that's nice of you. Nice? He gets paid. Isn't it? He laughs. I'm such a nice guy, huh? Well, I won't keep you and your niceness any longer. Have fun at work. You too. I... I'm trying to. He seems much too cheerful for someone at work. Uh, no doubt he's here for other reasons. I... What? Okay. I gl Let's just pretend that never happened. I glance back at the library. Marianne's still on the phone. I don't think she'll mind if I leave. Well, that was... Interesting. I feel like I made a complete fool of myself in there, though. Across the street from me, I see a small general store. Hmm. Susanna didn't say I had to be back right away, did she? It can hurt if I pop in for a short look. Ah, oh, she's gonna kill you. Hello? What the fuck is this? What? There doesn't appear to be any aisles. There's not a fruit stall. The banana is next to the fish, which are in turn next to the... What are those? Apples? Fucking odd-looking apples. I would not eat those. But there's not even, like, aisles or, um, you know, boxes of fruit. Nothing like that. No, we'll put three of them on shelves. Absolutely mental, the lot of you. Also, good, uh, a good array of plastic bags in case you ever needed them. So the alcoholics of Fairbrook. Hello, I poke my head into the store and look around. It's fairly small, but the shelves are stocked high with pretty much everything. Is anyone here? I sure hope so. Yeah, new guy, hello. You'd look a bit weird. A young man with neatly combed hair and glasses appears from behind a shelf. Looking for something in particular? Uh, no, just browsing. He approaches me and looks me down, up and down carefully. From the look in his eyes, it seems like he's processing something. Finally, he arrives at his conclusion. I haven't seen you before. I thought he was pausing that long in order to so then he goes round. Natalie, gotcha. Not just... Sorry, I'm kind of blind. I'm just going to look at you here for... No, I definitely don't know you. Definitely don't know you. Yeah, I'm Natalie. Oh, of course. New girl working for Susanna. Yes, everyone knows me. <laughs> uh, does everyone in this place have to refer to me as the new girl? Well, it's better than that and everyone getting your name wrong, isn't it? And everyone calling you, like, Natasha. Yes, that would be me. He doesn't seem to notice the hint of annoyance in my voice. Well? Yes? This is the part where you tell me your name. My name is Ryan. Nice to meet you, Ryan. I'm sure the same is true of you. He nods and smiles. Well, it's by the front door. What is? The supplies that Susanna ordered. You're here to pick them up, aren't you? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah sure, why not? Yeah, uh... He called me in, and I was just like, hi, sup and such. And uh, we got it like that. I, I wasn't, like, distracted. <laughs> I shrug. Maybe Susanna will forgive me this morning if I bring her whatever it is this is. I'm really not in the mood to leave so soon, though. So, um, do you live here? To some extent. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You look like a French poet. Oh, uh, laugh is the... Christ. What do you mean? I attend college out of the state, but I reside with my family here when school is not in session. <clears throat> that's cool. What are you studying? <clears throat> biology. Well, that's interesting. Are you going to be a biologist? He shrugs. I don't know. It just seems an interesting field of study. Yeah, if I were to ever study in something of that sort of capacity, I'd probably do that as well. <clears throat> I feel like I'm interrogating him. He doesn't seem interested in sharing information unless I ask him directly. <clears throat> okay, so... The four boys, let's face it, we, we have to romance, are Steve, this guy, Trent and Jacob. Uh, 
So we've got hippie twat, twat, or this guy. We've got to fucking end up with Steve at this rate, Christ. I can't tell if he's annoyed or not, though. In fact, he doesn't seem to care either way. <clears throat> Ask if he wants to be left alone. Let's do that. Why not? Um, hey, do you want me to leave you alone? Alone? Why do you ask? Well, it just sort of seems like you'd rather be alone. No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just a lousy conservation conversationalist. Well, I wouldn't say you're lousy. Well, maybe a little. Do you not like talking about yourself? I guess I'm fine with it. It just doesn't seem like a very interesting subject. <clears throat> now, now, that is something I'd expect to hear from an emo 14-year-old girl. You should be saying that. He shrugs. Well, don't decide that for other people. I think you're interesting. No, oh, I picked the right option. You do? He looks surprised. Of course. I head for the door and pick up the package sitting on the ground. It's heavier than I expect it to be. Is he going to stop us and say something? So we have two shy people here. We've got this guy and Jacob. <laughs> Whatever. I hope you don't mind if I come by later. I don't mind at all. Good. I kick open the door and head out. I walk carefully along the icy ground. The box I'm carrying is so large I can barely see my feet. I stare at the ground intently, placing each step with precision. I step on a particularly icy patch of ground and my foot slips from under me. Eek! Whoa! Okay, so this is Steve. He is underprepared. Considering it's snowing and it's icing all around, he was wearing... I don't know what kind of coat that is. A weird coat, a jumper, and some... Are those weird trousers? Come on. What are these? All dressed like you from the 1960s, the lot of you. A boy with brown hair steps forward and places a hand on my shoulder to help steady me. I love how unsubtle it is with introducing all the characters. <laughs> like, he just happened to be them when we slipped over this. <laughs> uh huh. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, thanks for that. You look like you could do us a little help. He points to the box I'm carrying. Want me to carry that? Oh, yes, please. I quickly dump the box into his outstretched hands. It's nice to meet you. My name's Natalie. Oh, you must be. Yeah, the new girl, I know. He blinks and bursts out laughing. Oh, well, actually, I was going to say Clara's roommate. Oh, fucking high five, sunshine. Oh. The name's Steve. I'm not exactly a Fairbrook resident either, so I know how it feels to be the outsider. Steve, the name sounds familiar. Familiar? You were told last night who he was. How, how many other people have you been told about? You've been told about... Oh, wait, no one. Just... The, uh, whatever. Susanna and Jacob were talking about you last night. You're from Los Angeles, right? Sure am. I drive up here to see my uncle as often as I can. He had a heart attack last summer, so he hasn't been able to do much work on the farm anymore. <laughs> Thanks for just casually dropping in that in there. Like, that is definitely something I'd mention to someone I barely knew. First time meeting them. By the way, uncle had a heart attack. That's, uh, that's why I'm here. Oh, fuck you now. It's nice of you to come help. It's the least I can do. He's like a father to me. Oh, don't start speaking about your daddy issues as well. Oh, is your father gone? Steve grins wryly. He's not dead, if that's what you mean, but he's never really been there for me. Oh my god! I... <laughs> this isn't how first conversations go with people! You can't just say that! I get they're trying to, like, sum up the first bit. They're, they're, they're trying to sum up everything that happened in summer in Fairbrook very quickly. But they're doing it like this. It's really weird. And the music as well. God. He's not dead, but he's never been there for me. So my uncle's like my dad because my dad's like actually a cock. Like... Oh, God, let's just get on with it, shall we? We're trying to make it good now, but it's awkward, you know. He pauses for a moment to shift the weight of the box in his arms. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll all work out in time. <laughs> oh, God, this is face desk time. What about your parents? What are they like? So you'd rather not talk about it, say so they're very strict. Um, uh, sure, fuck it. If we're in open hour, why not? They're very strict. They're strict, like really strict. I think they're mad at me for not being more mature and stuff. Oh, Steve can relate to that in a way that, you know, you didn't know, but I did. That's why I chose the option. Hmm, that sounds a little familiar. What did I say? Actually, it was their idea to get a job. For me to get a job, I guess they want me to learn responsibility or something. Come on! I know you're trying to write the character as being, uh, you know, stuck up, immature little twat, but come on! 
What? Let's read the last two things she says. I think they're mad at me for not being more mature and stuff. I guess they want me to learn responsibility or something. Sorry, was that exposition I heard? Oh wait, it's difficult not to, because it's like someone's throat fucking me with the exposition.